Okay, so in this video, we're just going to have a look at this question here where we are looking at equations of tangents to circles, where we're also looking at area of a triangle. So you might want to just pause the video, have a go at this question, but otherwise, stick with me and let's get started. particular question are going to be linked in the description so make sure you check out those for any of these types of videos. Now this question here says the line L is a tangent to the circle x squared plus y squared equals 40 at the point A and then it says A is the point 2 6. Now that's important for us to be able to visualize it and it also tells us that coordinate where our tangent is meeting the circle so we'll go about drawing that in just a minute. It says the line L crosses the x-axis at the point P, work out the area of triangle OAP. So let's actually visualize this and see what we're working with. So if we draw a basic coordinate axis and just draw a really basic circle, and let's just think about where that coordinate is. So it's in the positive quadrant, so it's somewhere over here. And don't worry about it being accurate, it's purely for us to visualize it. Now if we draw a tangent in, and again you don't need to worry about that being perfect, as you can see mine's not even particularly straight and isn't even touching the circle, but that's fine. It is just a basic sketch, so I've drawn it in a real sketch-like manner. So when we go about doing this, we need to think about what we're doing. Now we have the point A, which is over there, so let's label that A, and we'll call that 2, 6. We know that that is crossing the x-axis at point P, so just down here, that's the point P. And straight away, let's think about what we know. We don't know the x coordinate, but we do know the y coordinate. The y coordinate is zero. But obviously, we don't know the x coordinate uh, as it's not told us anything about that. So we might have to work that out. We know that the center is the point zero, so that's the origin. And we're going to be working out the triangle that is created via those three points. Now, if we think about that triangle straight away, do we know anything about it? Well, we don't know the base of the triangle because we don't know the x coordinate at point P but we do know the height. We know the height because the y coordinate at point A is six. So we know that the height is six. So if we can get the length of the base, we can just do base times height and divide our answer by two, and that will give us the area of the triangle. So that's the problem we have to figure out, but obviously we have equations of tangents involved here. So we have to think here, what is the actual problem we need to do? Well, if we have the equation of the tangent, we can figure out where it intersects the x-axis because we know the y-coordinate is zero. So how do we get the equation of the tangent? Well, to do that, we need to know the gradient. And to know the gradient, we're going to have to figure out the gradient of the radius because the radius is perpendicular. Now, we can get the gradient of the radius. So for the radius, if we go about writing that down, if we look at the rise over run between the origin, which we know the coordinate is zero, zero, and the point A26, if we do our change in Y over change in X, the change in the Y coordinate goes from 0 to 6, so that's 6. The change in the X coordinate goes from 0 to 2, so that's 2. 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. So for the radius, the gradient is equal to 3. Now if we look at the tangent, as it is perpendicular to the radius, we'll do the perpendicular gradient. We do that by doing the negative reciprocal. So we flip that over. Of course, 3 could be written as 3 over 1. So it becomes negative 1 over 3. The direction of the gradient changes. It goes from being positive to negative, And we do the reciprocal of 3 to find that negative reciprocal. So now we know the gradient of the tangent. We can actually put that into y equals mx plus c. So we know that the equation of that tangent is going to be y equals minus a third x plus c. To find the value of c, we'd have to substitute in a coordinate on that line. Now that's good because we know that a is on the line. So we can sub the coordinate 2, 6 into our equation. So y is 6, so 6 is equal to minus a third, multiplied by the x coordinate, which is 2, plus c. So we've got to do 2 times negative a third, so 6 is equal to negative 2 thirds, x plus c and 
Sorry, we didn't need the x there. Negative 2 thirds plus c. So to find the value of c, we add the 2 thirds over. So if we add 2 thirds to 6, that's going to be 6 and 2 thirds. And of course, we could write that as an improper fraction as well. So 6 times 3 is 18. Add the 2 is 20. So we could say that c is 20 over 3. Now for the purpose of this, I can already see where this is going. So we're going to write this as 20 over 3 for our value of c. So I'm going to write my equation. You're going to see why. So let's bring this over to here now. So we have y equals minus a third x plus 20 over 3. Now why have I left it as 20 over 3? Now let's have a look. So in order to find that x coordinate where it crosses the x axis, we need to substitute where y is 0. We know it's 0 because the x axis goes through y equals 0. That's the other name for the x axis. So if we actually put 0 in, we get 0 equals minus a third x plus 20 over 3. Now to solve this, I'm going to add that third x to the other side. So when we add a third x to the other side, we get one third x equals 20 over 3. So at this point here, I'm going to have to divide by one third. So to divide 20 over 3 by one third, we needed it to be an improper fraction so that we can apply our keep flip change rule. So I'm going to divide by a third. So to get x, I'm going to do 20 over 3. And I'm going to divide it by a third. So let's change that. So that's going to be 20 over 3 multiplied by 3 over 1. So 20 times 3 is 60. 3 times 1 is 3. And 60 divided by 3 is 20. So we now know that the x coordinate at point P is 20, which means that the base length of that triangle is 20. So now we can actually go about finishing this off because we know the height of the triangle is 6, we know the base is 20, so you can either do half base times height or base times height divided by 2, completely up to you. But if we finish this off, we've got base times height, so 20, multiplied by 6, the height, divide it by 2, which is 60. So there we go, the area of our triangle is 60. Sometimes you could also give units with that. Obviously, it's not in centimetres or anything, so you could say units squared, but quite often it's fine just to leave your answer as a number, but just do have a look if it asks you to give it in a particular unit or if there's a certain unit written on your dotted line on your exam. But there we go, the area of our triangle is 60, and that's how you go about working out the area of a triangle when you're using equations of tangents. So if you want a more in-depth look looking at this topic, you want to go through some more practice questions, just understanding the basics behind this topic, I'll link the full video in the description, you can see it on the screen. And within that video, if you click into the description, just like this one, you'll see that all of the topics are listed there as well. So even if you're not sure on that topic and you figure out the bits that you're not sure on, they're all there, they're all linked to the description and they're all there for you to practice. So hopefully you found this video useful and helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.